Madame Mossberg's life's work was um, quite amazing, really. She was born in 1849 in Sweden. She was a fantastic visionary. She was uh, the founder of Dartford College of Education, which at that time was called the Bergman Osterberg Physical Training College. When you look at Madame Osterberg, she's the last sort of person you'd expect to be concerned with health and physical education. And she didn't really begin her life's work till she was nearly 30, when she went to the Swedish Institute of Gymnastics in Stockholm. She was a very, very small lady, um, quite rotund as well, and um, she wasn't particularly interested in sport. She trained in Swedish drill, which was very popular in Sweden and Europe at that time, but not so popular in England. But she did realise that people's lives, women's lives, could be changed if they adopted healthy practices and indulged in sport, um, which was the complete opposite of the philosophy that prevailed during Victorian times. She then travelled all over Europe and parts of America and she ended up in England at a time when the London Board of Education were looking for someone to take over uh, the training of girls and infants in, um, in uh, state schools. She chose England to come and do her life. She had a real vision about how she wanted girls to develop themselves not only in an academic or mental sense but also in a, a physical sense as well. When women were generally seen as what they described as the weaker vessel, um, they uh, were seen to be um, psychologically and physically inferior to men. Madame Osterberg's view was that women could actually achieve anything if they were trained properly, if their bodies were trained properly, if they were given the chance to indulge in sports and physical activity. Madam's life work was based around the idea of a sound mind and a sound body. So really she was a visionary, a revolutionary, a pioneer, an emancipator and a liberator. She thought of English girls and women as her special English roses. She actually trained over a thousand, thirteen hundred teachers to teach Swedish drill in state schools. So her work started changing the nature of, of physical education. And basically the curriculum that we now have in our schools owes its debt to Madame Osterberg because she came over to England with a specific vision. She saw the potential that women could actually live fulfilled lives uh, by being much more healthy. So she really believed that she could change the health of um, particularly women in this country. She was a great suffragette. She believed very strongly in the emancipation of women. Victorian days, if you can imagine, in order to do sports, girls and women couldn't really move freely. Madam believed that you should be freely able to move in your clothing and she didn't really appreciate the Victorian style of dress. They wore corsets, they wore very long skirts. So in conjunction with one of her students, Mary Tate, who later became one of the lecturers, here, um, they designed the gym slip. Which was uh, without arms, so the sleeves were taken away, and it was shortened, which was um, rather audacious for the day, because uh, people were used to seeing ladies doing certain activities in very long skirts. And this is the home of netball because netball was founded here. It was pioneered here in the early days by the students. Um, it did come over from America. In 1897, she invited a man called Dr. Tolls over from America. She probably had met him before in one of her travels. And he came over and showed the girls how to play basketball. But they developed it in different kinds of ways. They changed the sections, they changed the, the goals. And they then adapted the game uh, to turn it into netball so that it would be more acceptable for Victorian women. And then later on they then formulated the rules of netball as we know it today. When Madame came here, there was no swimming pool originally, and they used to go to the river to swim, if at all. But because Madame Osterberg was very robust and very scientific... She would actually teach them the exercises on dry land and say to them, 
go in the water and do that and you will swim. Which is amazing, isn't it? So with no swimming pool, all the students learnt to swim. And she said, when you get into the river, when you get into the water, you've now done the drills, you know exactly what you have to do, you will be able to swim. And apparently they did, which I think is quite amazing. Dartford College, the physical education here was the best, the most specialist of the colleges. So I think her legacy to the modern curriculum is, is quite significant, really. And the fact that her students taught in that way right across the world um, means her legacy also extends uh, way beyond the shores of Britain. She was the one that invented the first female profession for women, which was physical education. The historical achievement, all the firsts that has happened here, and, you know, the legacy of Madame Osterberg is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs>